hold here today. I'm Amelia Portal, Vice President of the student chapter EADE in uh, Aix-Marseille University. So I introduce you the EADE, that's the European Association of Geoscientists and Engineering. This is a global professional non-profit association for geoscientists and engineers. It provides a global network of commercial and academic professional uh, to all the members in multidisciplinary and international way. Uh, the student chapter especially provide a platform for the geoscience and engineers students to meet and exchange, exchange uh, ideas and, and initiate activities with the support of EADE. For example, since the beginning of our student chapter, we already do done um, a little field trip conference uh, roundtable with PhD and a lot of things. So today we are happy to be in association with Petronil Academy. So um, I give the mic to, to them. Thank you, Emilia, very much. Thank you. Emilia from ex Merce University student chapter. Uh, we are delighted to have you with us today. Uh, everyone, good evening. I am Moaz Abdullah from Petronil Academy. It's a, a platform for online learning targeting the oil and gas industry. Today, we present to you a great session about uh, introduction to wireline logging, an interesting topic in oil and gas industry. Uh, allow me first, uh, before I start, introduce uh, our distinguished instructor for today, Mr. Daoud Hussein. Mr. Hussein got more than 15 years of experience in oil and gas industry. He started his career path as a system engineer in 2004 and for two years in International Jabal Ali Free Zone in Dubai. After that, Mr. Hussein joined uh, Schlumberger as wireline uh, field engineer from 2006 to 2011. He worked uh, during this time in Sudan, Egypt, and in Kuwait. After that, Mr. Hussein joined uh, Estrin, a national oil field services company in Kuwait as account sales manager. And uh, then he became the sales and marketing manager in the period of 2016 to 2017. Later in 2017, Mr. Hussein joined Dynamic International Oil Service Company as Sudan branch uh, operation manager. Right now, uh, Mr. Hussein serves as the service delivery manager at Dynamic International Oil Service Company. Mr. Hussein, we are delighted and happy to have you with us today. Before we start, okay, thank you. Before we start, I would like to inform all of you that this session will be recorded and later on will be uploaded into our YouTube channel, Petronile Academy. At the end of the session, there will be a Q&A session. So during the session, if you have any questions, comments, please write them down in the chat box. I think Mr. Hussein will be very happy to answer all, of, all your questions. So Mr. Hussein, again, we are, we are happy to have you here today. You can start now. The screen is all yours. Thank you. OK, thank you, uh, Moaz and Amelia, for introducing me and giving me this uh, chance to present an uh, introduction to wireline logging. OK, so the wireline uh, logging is a very big uh, topic. And even the introduction would be too long if we just go by header line of each uh, tool, surface, application, and etc. Uh, I will be going quickly to cover many points. So you can uh, refer. Uh, so please uh, feel free to write any notes or ask a question at the end of the presentation. If you have any question, you may refer to the slide number uh, at the bottom here, as you can see. And then we can discuss it later on the end of the presentation. Uh, I'll start with a quick uh, brief introduction to wireline and then uh, tool uh, classification principle, wireline logging hazard and associated risk and also the measurement uh, and porthole effect and tool calibration, sampling and fluid uh, testing, and finally the operation uh, procedure. The wire line, uh, what is a wire line? If you go to Wikipedia, they introduce wire line as a well uh, bore uh, logging, also known as a borehole logging. Uh, it's a practice of making detailed record uh, of a well log of uh, geologic formation penetrated by the borehole. 
the log may be uh, based on either uh, vi visual inspection or sample through brought to the surface geological uh, log or in the physical measurement made by an instrument lower to the well by wear line. We call it also geophysical log. Some uh, type of uh, geophysical uh, log where can be done during the phases of the well history, which is uh, the drilling or completion or production or abandonment of the well. Uh, the well logging performed in the borehole drill for oil and gas or groundwater or mineral or uh, geothermal exploration, as well as part of the environmental and geotechnical studies. So there is a different reason for uh, the well logging depending on the, the requirement. So in general, the wear line is to record or acquire formation data as many as the main objective. However, there are uh, some other application of the wear line to convey the tools or surface for the, what we discussed later on. The name itself of the wear, wear line was started as an electric survey. And then a few later on, the, the name changed to well log and was being used in the US. And then after that, also the people started to call it the wire line logging because the, the use of the wire to log or lower down the logging tool to the well bore. Okay. The oil, well, usually uh, there is no technology year to date that can tell uh, the well, before they drill the well, the well will have oil or not. So it's still, uh, but there's a, a lot of indication that uh, the well has oil. So before we drill the oil, usually we look for a uh, cab rock that uh, can trap the oil or hydrocarbon. And then this get it from the seismic. And then after that, we drill the well. And then accordingly, we find there's a well oil or not from the wire line. But uh, and if you look at the history, how the wire line is started and developed, it is starting in 1912 by Conrad uh, Schlumberger. However, uh, until uh, 1920, the Conrad uh, Schlumberger, he, he published his result, which he acquired in 1912. And it found it very, very promising and experienced surface resistivity measurement. The result was a method while revealing underground feature, such as the bed boundaries and the direction of uh, formation layer dip. This was crucial because the technique provided extra information that might be useful for allocating the substructure forming the traps. This is what we're looking for actually uh, in the in the early stage of the service seismic, the substructure, which is uh, forming the traps, this traps the mineral such as oil and gas. And after 1940 until uh, today, there is always uh, improvement and development for the technology of the wire line and it start to develop a lot. And many companies went to this business and it start also to add the fingerprint to develop the, the wire line surfaces. So next, uh, we will also tell you uh, the classification, the tool classification. Uh, there are main two classification for wear line tools, as you can see here, uh, open hole and case hole surfaces. The open hole mean the, the well is still under drilling stage. So the, the mud are still inside the bore hole, while uh, case hole mean obviously that the well is already cased and been cemented already, okay? The open hole and case hole has many categories and group. I have just made them in this way in order to be, to make them easy for to present. However, this group can be changed from person to another person, okay? But to make it easy, I, I chose this uh, type of grouping way. The open hole tools are, uh, as you can see here in this picture, so an example of open hole tools are most likely a little big and heavy and the OD is around, the average OD is 3.5 inch, and it can go up to five inch. And on the other hand, the case hole tools are also slim and very small, and the average OD for them is like two inch. And they are made small so that they can go through tubing in the casing and do the acquire the log. Next uh, will be the open hole tools. Open hole tools uh, group them to, as you can see, to four group. The most important group is the quad combo. Quad mean in Latin is a four. So it has four component. Uh, and uh, 
Qualcomm is the most important log combination as it has the basic requirement to know in the formation properties. And usually it is the first uh, log in the well. And, uh, and some people, they call it differently. Some people call it PEX. Uh, some people call it Islam log. So, but end of the day, we call it quad combo log. It has more four components, subcomponent, nuclear. When I mean nuclear, I mean the gamma ray or spectral gamma ray or neutron prosty or density and uh, elementary capture. All the tools that use radioactive source technique or radiation technique. And then uh, second subgroup is a resistivity, which is contained the lateral log resistivity or induction resistivity or micro spherical resistivity or uh, resistivity image and dipping tool. Uh, based on the well type, well mud, we decided either to go for uh, lateral log resistivity for water-based mud, or we prefer uh, induction resistivity for oil-based mud tool. Uh, also, there's a, uh, many combination. You can do one or two, depending on the client requirement, okay? The Sonic, it has, a, as you can hear, the Sonic group, we have normal borehole Sonic or conventional Sonic or advanced Sonic like a dipole tools or a Sonic imaging tool, which is also given the Sonic output. And finally, the borehole geometry, the fourth component is a borehole geometry, which is mainly the caliber log. So either we use a single caliber or a multi-arm caliber, depend on the requirement itself, okay? So again, the most of the well, quad combo is only run being used, the first run and only one run to be used, especially for the development well, where you already know the formation and everything you know about the formation, you just need to allocate what is the depth of hydrocarbon zone, okay? And uh, the second group is a sampling, which is either a fluid sample or coring sample. So fluid sample will be discussed later in another slide. Is basically you get a fluid, actual fluid sample from the bottom. So to understand is it oil or water or gas or filtrate, and you bring it to the surface for further analyzing. And the core uh, hardcore sampling is uh, you bring physical from the formation, so they can study the density of the rear core of the of the formation. Okay. There are also now uh, the magnetic resonance family tools, which uh, measure the permeability and the porosity of the formation. And finally, the seismic, uh, which measure, give, measure the seismic depths and can be compared to the surface uh, seismic, which is being done on the earlier stage of the exploration. The good thing of the wireline seismic, it gives depths related to the de layer, while the surface seismic done in the exploration level, it was based on time, response on time level. So, you correlate each of them so you know the depth of each layer according to the time instead of time uh, conveyed. There are also uh, some open hole surfaces but are not regular used. So I just skip them for the time being, but these are the main categories. Next is the case hole surfaces. I divide them to five group, as you can see. The first one is a well integrity, which is the most important, most common use, which has two subgroups cement evaluation and casing inspection. The cement evaluation is uh, being done by different technique, either a sonic for a CBL uh, evaluation for cement or ultrasonic for a cement evaluation, or sometimes we use a radiation tool for cement evaluation. And casing inspection is also very important to know the casing if you have a damage in the casing or the tubing for the production of the well and can be done also by ultrasonic or can be done by magnetic tools or it can be done by cameras, video cameras that down hole to the well and to check the casing integrity. Production logging tools uh, is a combination of tools that go to the well, uh, well port to understand the well profile, production profile. If you have many zones that produce oil and some zone produce water, you need to understand which zone is producing the oil, which one is producing the water, and what is the production rate down hole? So you can estimate it in the surface to improve or reduce your water cut and to know how much production you can increase or decrease. And second group is the saturation tools that measure saturation directly or indirectly. Some tools they measure the saturation direct. Some tools they measure resistivity behind casing. Then accordingly, they measure the saturation. This will help to know your formation is half uh, still oil or the formation depletion uh, or it still can produce oil. It can give you more about the reservoir. 
And uh, then we go to the perforation and plug. So perforation meant to be giving you the, the communication between the, your well and the formation. So basically uh, it make a hole through the casing and cementing until it reaches the formation. So it will have a channel between the formation and your borehole so you can produce the oil. The more uh, penetration, the more communication with the peel, with the, with the formation. And also there are other subsurfaces for the perforation explosive, such like plug, you use a plug to isolate zone, or you use a cutter to cut a casing or a tubing. And there's other surfaces use the perforation for uh, in case one. And finally, the well intervention, because as I said, the wireline uh, provide a good platform for any technology to be conveyed to the well board, because it will provide mechanical connection and it will provide electrical connection and also uh, data connection. So many uh, technology and other things have been used for the wireline for well intervention. And every day today it's been changed and added. So next, uh, the wireline hazard and risk associated. There is a many parameters and risk associated with the wireline. Uh, cable and uh, the cable wireline cable is always the most dangerous thing in the in the job because the cable will be under tension and it carry and lift all the tool conveyed to the well well. And anything happen, the cable can be broken and can be like very sharp sword. So always the cable. And rotation is a hazard. And uh, other common things like a slippery floor and the wireline tool itself is very heavy to lift and handle. We use explosive sometimes, as I mentioned earlier, that for uh, oil production, we use the radioactive source in uh, order to get acquired the data. And in the producing well, we have we work with a high pressure, so it's very dangerous, high voltage as well. And also the job of the wireline usually consists of long time, you cannot stop. So it there is a lot of fatigue management involved on it. So we, we, we repent all this time by usually the engineer uh, go for a spot meeting before each job and highlight uh, the risk and uh, tell the people to stay away from the cable, always wear PBE before each job, keep the well uh, covered. And uh, regarding radiation and the pressure, only we use certified people who should train to work with the job. And each job by itself, will have a HARC or risk assessment and should be followed strictly. And in case of any failure happen, it will tell you what, what is gonna your action to prevent and mitigate any losses. Uh, these are example of the wireline log. Uh, this example of a quad combo, which I discussed later on. From uh, left to right, this uh, we call it track number one, track number two, track number three. And in the middle here, we have track for the tension and the depths, okay? SP is the one of the essential log done, done for the wire line and one of the old log being done by Conrad Schlammerger, which is showing the bit and uh, as I showed, I can show also the interpretation. You can use it for uh, identify the trap record. And uh, caliber, it can show the borehole geometry if the, the well is done perfectly as a bit size, bland bit size, or over gauge, under gauge, and if there is a washout, no washout. And then the gamma ray is a very important also because we have it, we use it for uh, identifying the shale and sand formation. And the most important for, it is common for all wireline log because we use it for uh, correlation. The wireline, the formation have like a special signature, the formation. So it, it doesn't change with the time. So if you log now and you have this signature, for example, the curve go up and down, up and down, and go down all the way, this signature remains the same for all the run. So we rely on the gamma ray for depth correlation more than the actual depth, because actual depths, it might be changed depending on the cable stretch, a lot of correction can happen for the cable. Different company, they have different way for calculating the depths, but the gamma ray, it will never change of the formation, the signature of the gamma ray. On the second track, you can see it is the algorithm track for the resistivity. It's mainly made for the resistivity. And it's, it's made algorithm because the, there is a big variation between the reading of the, the resistivity. That's why to be visible, we prefer to have it on algorithm. And obviously, if you have a high resistivity, as you can see here, that good indication you have hydrocarbon zone. If low or overlapping, that means you have 
impermeable zone that always in the shale area. In the sand, you can see that there is a gap between the resistivity, so that good indication you have permeable zone and also that hydrocarbon because high resistivity. On the last track, it's a little bit complicated, a lot of care, but that show the DT is a, a delta sonic, delta time for the sonic tool, and also the density and also the prosty, neutron prosty. If there is any crossover between of them, between the prostate and density, that indication of hydrocarbon. The interpretation of the data itself is not the target of the wire line. So the wire line is mainly to acquire the data. Interpretation of the data is will be done by different uh, session, I guess, will be presented next week or later on. So I'll not go through the details of how to interpret the wire line data, but the main thing for the wire line, as I said, the objective is to acquire the data and he can just interpret this data is valid or bad. Next slide is uh, this is just another example of uh, different log being combined together in uh, one screen. Usually the petrophysics, when he look for the data, he doesn't look only for the quad combo, for example. He add all the log in one screen. So to be able to have good decision when he decide the, the, the zone and next step for more processing, okay? Uh, this is another example for uh, resistivity image, okay, which is show the deep meter and how is the formation being made. And if there is any fault or any dipping for the formation, and if you have oil, you can protect the oil will go on the left side or upper side if you need to decide for the future next well. So most likely on the dipping log, okay. Uh, this is the only example, that the previous example all was from the open hole, but this example, I bring it from the case hole. And this is for the surface uh, for reservoir and integrity tool that uh, allocate the hydrocarbon through casing. And it also helped to understand the lithology saturation as well as the uh, integrity of the casing of cement and, and uh, casing status. So this tool has a combination, uh, lithology, saturation, cementing and casing integrity. Uh, finally, we came to the borehole effect and borehole limitation, okay? So there is directly effect of the wireline. The wireline tool is affected by many factors. The most important factor for the wireline is the hole size and geometry. So basically the tool of the wireline is made to log between six to 12 inch. And if the size of the borehole is more than that or less, it sometimes affects the accuracy of the data, okay? And uh, also the caliber, you can see here, if the caliber is reading straight, is all fantastic. But if you have a washout, as you can see here, there's a washout from this example, that directly affect the measurement. Some measurement, they go beyond the tolerance, so the data will not be reliable if you found such a case like this here. The caliber is over uh, washout or reading too much high. The other uh, thing is the mud cake. The mud cake is uh, performed when the, the, the mud invaded to the formation. So the mud filtrate go inside the formation and lifting the mud cake in the borehole. So if the mud cake is more than 0.5 inch, then it will affect the measurement because it will act as a barrier and to, it will not make a communication between the tool and the formation. And salinity also affect, uh, formation salinity also affect our reading because for example, the salinity can capture the radioactive uh, for uh, density, neutron density. It also affects the resistivity. And finally, also the standoff. What we mean by standoff is the distance between the tool and the formation. So usually some tools are designed to be touching the formation, touching the formation to get the reading. But somehow there will be a small gap between the tool and the formation. For many reasons, one of the reason itself, the tool combination itself uh, could be some tool run centralized, some tool is centralized. So it will make a small gap on the tool physically between the tool and the formation, okay? But nevertheless, all these uh, parameters, like the whole size, the mud cake, salinity, standoff, are being considered during the processing and they, there is some correction applied to compensate for their effect according to each one. So coming to the tool calibration, why we, we, we have a calibration for wireline? Because mainly the calibration is to compensate for the tool electronics and sensor error. 
and also to check the tool measurement within normal or known condition or range, okay? So there are uh, two types of calibration. Master calibration, which we perform on time basis or long basis. For example, every month, every three months, six months, maybe once a year, okay? Or based on number of job, every 20 job, 50 job, 100 job. So it has a conditional to be done. It will be very long. And other calibration, which is run oftenly, we call it job calibration. So this job calibration, either before the job or after the job, or both of them, before and after the job. Okay. And the calibration usually consists of measuring the background signal and from knowing source. So you have like two points. The first point is a background measurement. And the second one, you know the, the knowing source. As example, for the density, for example, uh, when we do the density calibration, we use the aluminum or magnesium block. So we already know the density of each of them. And then we test the tool and we make like a line to know the performance of the tool. Or in case of the neutron porosity, we have a tank full of water and we already know how much is the porosity of the water. And then we test our tank, our tool, how it performs. Same for a resistivity tool. We have a simulator box that can simulate the current the resistivity. And then we see how the resistivity tool measure the known resistance, okay? Also, same for the sonic. We have a, like a sleeve or casing full with the water. And then we put sonic inside it to simulate how much is the sonic reading and et cetera, et cetera. So everyone have a potential depending on the tool measurement. We try to simulate it with the known condition to try to get gain and offset so the tool will be calibrated and perform accordingly. Uh, next, uh, we came to the sampling and fluid testing. The sampling has a lot of uh, benefit and techniques can be uh, used, but we will not, just for the time, we'll not go through the techniques of the sampling. I'll just go for the benefit more than the, the technique itself and how, how we get the sample and details like this. The sample has first point to allocate the hydrocarbon. We, if you get the sample, we get to know that this is a hydrocarbon or filtrate or gas or details of the hydrocarbon. And also we get to know the fluid properties. Once you do sampling, you get to know the fluid properties. Is it uh, ABI, heavy oil or light oil? And the second thing we get to know the, the pressure regime and uh, fluid contact. There is also, we can under, calculate the gas oil contact or oil water contact from the pressure itself. From the pressure regime, you can get to know the oil and gas contact, okay? And then accordingly, you can decide where to perforate to get the oil and where to avoid to perforate so you not get water instead of that. And then also the reservoir properties, you can know from the sample itself, the porosity, the saturation, the permeability, and the, the pressure itself. And finally, also it can be used to calculate the recovery factor and time. Because for example, if you, you have reservoir, let's say 1 million barrel, that doesn't mean that you can recover the 1 million barrel completely in the surface. There is also some calculation of the recovery. You could recover 50% of your reservoir or 60%. So the sampling also will help you and pressure will help you to calculate how much recovery you can get from your reservoir. So finally, last is the operation procedure. Uh, as you can see here from this uh, presentation, there is a, uh, we, we, when you go to the well side, you reverse the truck, as you can see in the picture on the reverse. So the back of the truck is facing the well, and then you start rig up. When we talk about rig up, that you help the wireline cable to go smooth all the way to make up the tool string. So you have two sheave wheels that for uh, removing the friction and easy rotate for the cable to move up and down. And then you make up your tool string, depending on the, the run, is it conventional, quad combo, or uh, sampling tool, or seismic, you connect your tool string. And then that means you rig up. Then after that, you object the tool, check operation test for the tool. And if you require to do before calibration, you make before calibration as required. And then after that, you are ready, then you run in hole until you reach the acquired depths of the client where he need the data from and start to record your data while usually we record the data while going up. And then uh, after you finish recording your data, you do some repeat section just to cross check that the tool is repeating the data perfectly. So you don't have any problem with the tools and confirming also the data is correct. 
And finally, after that, after you finish recording your data, you start uh, pull out a fault to the surface, and then you start to do a reverse as uh, so check, uh, another calibration if required, test the tool is okay. You start lay down the tool string, and finally lay down your uh, sheave wheels and removing your cable and release from the rig. Okay. Uh, just recap very quickly for the presentation. Uh, we started giving the introduction for wireline and what is the main objective for the wireline. As we said, it is to acquire data mainly. And next, we give classification for the tool. We divide it to two classification, open hole and case hole tool. <clears throat> Depending on the well condition, is it the open hole? Is still there the modern side or case hole surface or the well is case? And we give different categories for each of them. And we discuss also about the hazard happening to the wire line that, uh, and how to overcome this risk. And finally, we give some example of the log, showing the log, how it looks like. And details of interpretation of the log will be done by separate department or seven people, metrophysics or uh, geophysics, whom they do the interpretation for the data. We also discuss about the tool calibration, how to make the calibration of the tool, what is the benefit of the calibration, and how it will give me the good reading. And we discussed about the sampling and the fluid testing, and what is the sampling and the benefit of the sampling, how we can help me to identify the hydrocarbon, the properties, how to calculate the reservoir. And finally, how to do the operational procedure for very quick for the wire line, starting from the rig up of the tool until uh, rig down. Okay. Okay, so we came to the end. If you have any uh, question, feedback. And if you can see here, the introduction of lower lines made by Green Carol, so you should be happy, I assume. So uh, thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Hussein. Mr. Hussein, for this informative presentation, you covered a wide range of topics in wireline logging. Uh, now, as you said, it's time for the Q and A session. So, audience, if you have any questions, please feel free to write them down in the chat box below. Uh, we receive. Uh, Two questions, three questions until now for, from audience. The first question from uh, Lister Eiffel about tool calibration. Uh, what, what standard is used for tools calibration? Okay, the, the tool calibration, as I said, uh, is changed uh, from tool to another tool, okay? For example, as I said, the density tool, uh, we already know the, the density of aluminum or magnesium. So we inspect the tool, how much the tool is reading the known condition. And it has some tolerance. So for example, the density should be accurate to 0.03, for example. If the tool is reading plus or minus within this range, then it's okay. If it's more, then we need to check the tool. Either we send it to maintenance or check the tool again, or change the sensor that's reading the, the data. Okay. So every tool has, has its, own, its own standard, its own way of the calibration. We have another question from Abdurrahman. He said, uh, what is the difference between triple and quad combo? And which one is, a bit, is the largest, largest steps of in investigation? Uh, what is the difference between triple and quad combo? Okay, this is a good question actually. So the triple and quad combo is almost the same thing, okay? So it is the, like a, a crease name that quad means four, triple means three. So sometimes the client doesn't need to have uh, caliber and resistivity and nuclear and uh, sonic, okay? For example, they don't need the sonic. So only three of them, they call it triple combo, okay? If they need four of them, they need they call it a quad combo. If they need three, either they're removing the sonic out or they're removing the caliber out, they call it triple combo. But the reading is the same, but how you add or you remove the requirement. But the depth of investigation, everything will remain the same only the category of surface you want. So you remove a caliber or you move the sonic and then you rely on the other things. Quad combo is overall containing everything. Triple combo, only three out of four. Okay, we have a question from Mohamed Sufyan. Uh, what is the difference between uh, logging while drilling and wireline logging? LWD and wireline logging. Okay, very good question. So this one is a, uh, Wire line usually go by gravity. You, you have the wire line cable, convey your data and provide mechanical and electrical connection for the tool, okay? So we go by gravity. Sometimes the well is deviated or you have a problem with the well, 
So the tool cannot go by the gravity itself. The wireline tool cannot go by gravity because the wireline, if it deviated well, it can, the tool can held up at some point and you cannot go down. So in that case, either you go by a tough logging condition, we go wireline cable by, by tubing, or we go by LWD, which is like a drilling and measurement. They have a special tool can go not by wireline cable. They communicate by mud. They have a different technique. It's not a wireline at all. It's a different technique. They send the data through the mud with the bubbles and they have decoder and encoder so to send the data. So that goes through deviated well or sometimes memory. It goes through deviated well by tubing all the way in the horizontal well, record the data and remove outside. But the tool technique itself, almost similar to the wireline because they have resistivity, they have neutron, they have porosity, almost from same like a wireline tool. But the only thing, the communication is different. Our the conveyance is different. You have another question from Mohammed Bashir. He said, uh, what is the most used tools for getting sampling? Please, if it is possible, the mechanism. So tools, tools for getting sampling, please, uh, if it's possible, the mechanism for, for the tools. Okay. So the tool getting samples is uh, like, we have more than five or six companies they manufacture the tool, like starting from Schaumerger, Heliberto, and Baker. Every company has its own technique for getting the sample, okay? Some client, they call it uh, zero shock, zero offset, zero uh, communication. So the technique is uh, the tool, when you go down in the hole, they have a backer. They set, they push the backer against the formation. And then they start to suck from the formation. They have a pump, they can suck from the formation and they have a filter. So we're starting to make communication with the, with, the, with the formation by sucking by the pump from the fluid. And then there is output uh, like exit port to take the fluid out. And then while sucking from the formation and taking the fluid out to the well board, they have a technique to measure the, the fluid type. Uh, like a check the resistivity of the fluid or uh, optical check to see the, the oil or gas or water. So a lot of way to identify the fluid type or sensor to measure the density of the fluid. So from the density, you can know the fluid is a water or mud or oil. Each company has its own technique to get the, the fluid analyzer, analyzer. So basically you have a tool, you have, you have to set it against the required depths. So the bucker will be pushed against the formation. And then you have the tool inside there is some bump to suck from the formation and then some sensor to check what type of the fluid you have. The sensor could be either uh, density or optical or uh, resistivity or different, different type of sensor could be utilized to identify the fluid. Okay, you have a question from Mohammed Ali Said. He said, uh, what is the difference between RFT and FMT? RFT and FMT. So RFT is a Schlumberger tool, is a repeat formation tester, stand for repeat formation tester. And FMT is a formation, formation tool for uh, Chinese or Baker tool. So it's just a branding name, but objectives almost the same. So every company has its own name for the tool. So to make the branding itself. Some company call it EFD, like Enhanced Formation Drilling Tester, or uh, like MDT, somebody has another brand of tool, Modular uh, Dynamic Tool. So every company has a different name for the tool, but the objective at the end of the day is the same. You have a question from Abdurrahman Fouad. He said, how can drilling fluids affect badly on the log reading? The effect of drilling fluid on the log reading. So, if they use sometimes pride and special material in the mud, that affect our, our data. Like because it change on the mud cake. If the mud cake uh, become very thick, the mud cake should be, the, the fluid itself, the mud fluid should be considered the formation itself. If you use a mud cake or mud with a barite, with a high barite, with a silicate, with a lot of things, that will affect the data because it will build a mud cake. The mud cake will become like a barrier it will affect the, the tool to communicate with the formation. But most likely we will get the mud report from the mud engineer, and then we'll send it for the processing guy. The processing guy will try to allocate and remove the effect of each parameter because the barite has some effect on the signal uh, and silicate has different effect. And we measure also the resistivity on the mud in the surface, and then we simulate it downhole 
based on the temperature, we will know, to know like uh, what is the effect of the model resistivity and how it looks like. So there is a minor effect, but it be corrected during the processing itself. Okay, uh, I have a question for you myself, uh, Mr. Hussein. Uh, in open hole logging, uh, how can the wireline tool reach the horizontal section in horizontal wells? So either uh, we, we're using the TLC, we call it a tough log condition, or uh, TC, TCL, here tubing conveyed log. So instead of going by the cable itself, we connect the top, we have a special head, cable head that uh, connect the tool, wireline tool with the tubing, okay? And then we have another cable sub, call it side in the sub, that the cable of the wire line go through a hole in the tubing and be connected to the wire line tool. But the tool, like hanging up the tool, lowering down the tool will not be through the cable, wire line cable. It will be during the tubing. So the tubing will go regardless of the gravity. It will go, it can push the tool down because from the surface you can apply high weight, the tool will go down with the tubing. And for the communication and link up for the data, we still use the wire line cable through making a side into the sub with a, with a hole inside it that the cable can go through it and latch with the wire line tool to give the uh, electrical connection and getting also the data. Or sometimes the client go for LWD, which is not to use wire line technique, it will use the MOT technique and pulse. So it send the data by the pulse and the bubble from the MOT. So either this one or this one. Okay, audience, yeah. if anyone have any questions, please write it down. Seems like we don't have any more questions. I have a last question for you, Mr. Hussein, and regarding radiation safety. Uh, is it safe to be around radioactive material like Zosin wireline tool in the well site uh, your, from for, your experience? For, yeah, for the wireline, there is a big, for radiation especially, there is a big rule, they, we call it ALARA. ALARA stands for as low as achievable. So always try to be away from the radioactive source. So the time, shield, and distance. So if you keep this factor as minimum, like time should be, should be very low as possible. You should not stay very long to close to the radioactive source. And distance should be as far as possible from the radioactive source. Usually the distance is giving the double square time the, the benefit, like if you stay one meter away, it's not like I say two meters. It's almost four times or square times, like two meter equivalent to four meter and three meter equivalent to nine meters away. So we keep minimum time, far, five uh, away distance and and also the the shield. We keep, we keep the source in the shield. So there is some calculation for the exposure of radiation for the everybody. So if you stay minimum time with a, with a shield. So we get how much exposure you got and that should not reach more than 20 millisievert per year or per quarter. So if more than that, we need to investigate why the guy had got more exposure to radiation. But usually if you, you keep these three factors, you are not affected. For storage, we keep it as far away from the people. Nobody should go close to the source unless required for operation. So try to minimize the time distance and shield, always the source should be in the shield to avoid uh, any effect. Okay, this was the last question. Thank you, Mr. Dawood Hussein for this presentation. Uh, much appreciated uh, from Petronal Academy and EAGE uh, student chapter. Uh, for others, don't forget to follow our channel in YouTube and follow us in LinkedIn and Instagram. The links will be posted down there in the chat box. Thank you all for your time, Mr. Hussein and uh, Mrs. Emilia from Ex Mercelia EAG student chapter. Until next time, Petronile and EAG wishes you all happy new year. Thank you very much in advance. Okay, thank you, thank you all. Thank you.